Hello, everyone. Welcome to Snap Take. I'm Glazer of the Snap Judgments Podcast, the official podcast of Snap Zone. And what you see on your screen is the YouTube channel of my friend, Fazer. Fazer is one of my buddies in the game. He's one of the people I talk to the most. And I believe Fazer has built a busted, busted deck. This deck is extremely powerful. I had the opportunity to try and play this deck and the sheer power it puts out and the sheer different variety of ways it has it out that power and unpredictability is absolutely stellar. We're going to talk about that deck momentarily, but first I'm going to ask you to subscribe to me first. You're already here. It's nice and easy. Sub here, we bring you two decks a day, every single weekday, sometimes a second deck, especially over the summer. I'm a teacher, got some free time. So I'm making extra videos for you. We keep you ahead of the meta. We help you hit infinite. We help you get those infinity tickets and borders. We help you reach all your goals in Marvel Snap. And in addition, we do the biggest giveaway in the game. We're giving away at worst five season passes next season and probably something more like 10. Early next week, that announcement will come and you will know how to win, how to enter and win season passes, but you got to be subbed to be able to enter. So make sure you're subscribed. In addition, we're giving away a bunch of Marvel Snap Zone uh, premium access because the legendary Den, a professional card player, is doing free coaching for premium members. That can't be beat, and I want more people to experience it so you can get better at Snap, learn more, find the value in this. So we're giving that away too. Now, I'd also like you to subscribe to Fazer. It's at Fazer underscore Snap on YouTube. You can just YouTube, Google Fazer Snap. That's how I found it again, even though I'm already subbed, as you can see. Um, Fazer has this, basically what he's doing on his YouTube is this game show series where he plays a uh, notable Snap player in like a half draft, half constructed format and does an interview with them in the process. You can see that there are three episodes up, one with Super Tech God, our boy, um, one of my favorite people in this game, one with Eggs, a uh, soon-to-be Marvel Snap, uh, Snap Judgments podcast guest. We love eggs and the great Lambi. This morning I shared two Lambi decks. Make sure you check that out if you have interest. Lambi has a bounce deck and a Thanos deck, both worth checking out. I'd love you to know. Bowser is a phenomenal player, phenomenal deck builder. Let's not spoil it, but let's just say he's really, really, really good at this game. Also, I was on this. He hasn't gotten my video up yet. Gotta get on that, Faz. So my video should be up relatively soon. Let's talk his deck. His deck is called Fazer Power. I love the name. Uh, we're going to call it Glazer Power, though, just to annoy him from now on. This deck has like 18 different things it can do. Nebula was in that sunspot, in that um, Psylocke spot for most of the time. I'm going to tell you why I cut her. And, well, okay, the main reason I cut her. Let's be completely honest. Full, full disclosure, right? Um, on I Basically, every video I post, every article I write, I write for Marvel Snap Zone. It's, what do I replace Nebula with? What do I replace Jeff with? Well, the answer is Psylocke. Psylocke goes in one of those two spots if you're missing either of those cards. If you're miss, missing both, then you're down to like an Iceman or spider Ham. Both good shouts. Cool? Good. Now, Psylocke, what Psylocke allows you to do is it allows you to, on turn six, if you're not going to be able to play, have a turn seven, play both Lady Sif and Ghost Rider. You might notice the only card that often costs six in this deck is Infinite, right? That is a 27 power turn six. That seems like it's probably pretty. Um, other things this deck can do. It can magic on turn three. This is my favorite thing it does. It magics on turn three, Sheree's on turn four, and then passes on turn five. At that point, um, you can play Infinite on turn six for 40. You can then on turn seven, copy that with Taskmaster for two 40 power cards. You can, um, do a Sherry pass She-Hulk Taskmaster on turn six. None of that even needs a turn seven, right? And then on turn seven, you can just drop like a red skull. Or on turn seven, you can just drop Sift and Ghost Sif and Ghost Rider alone. Um, you can conceivably um, drop a She Hulk if you pass turn five with any number of cards. Think Jeff and Armor. And then on the next turn, go Sif and Ghost Rider. This, um, you can just go Sherry, Red Skull, and then play Taskmaster just fine. And again, now you've got 28 power, 28 power, and then you've got that 27 power turn 7 open to you with Sif, uh, Ghost Rider. There are uh, so many different lines for this deck to be extremely powerful. All of this passing does nothing but benefit Sunspot. It'd be like there's a version of this I'm absolutely certain that ends up running High Evolutionary instead of um, 
some of the lower cost stuff like Psylocke and Jeff, and then adds a few extra evolutionary skip power cards and runs Hulk. That probably works great too, but this deck does not need to be messed with. Is it a little bit weak to, um, excuse me, is it a little bit weak to Shang? To an extent, right? They can only usually Shang in one spot. You're dropping um, 27 power one place, 28 in another, 28 in another, or some other similar nonsense. That's more than most opponents can deal with. This deck is so good, it goes over the top of fundamentally everything. This might be a meta deck. Uh, I'm leaning towards it. This is one of the best decks in the game. Again, we are so early into this new format that it's really hard to determine that at this point. But this deck is wildly, wildly, wildly powerful. Um, it does an excellent job of mucking up everything your opponent wants to do. Magic and Shuri have always been a good combo. I was trying to run them together even when I lost five and then Shuri on six or uh, skip six and then Shuri and something else on seven. You don't need to do that anymore. You can just magic beforehand on three and then Shuri on four or five and go straight to town. The combos here are absurd. They're so powerful. Be wary of opponent Scarlet Witches and Storms to blow up your magic lanes, but you should be able to read what type of deck it is. If it's a Sarah deck, you're going to have to play a lot more carefully, right? Go for the slightly lower power but safer plays. Prioritize cards like armor and playing things safely in armor lane and so on. That's how you beat that matchup, but you don't really have any super terrible matchups. Um, Jeff even gives you some reach into unreach. This deck is sick, worth trying, worth playing. You're going to be happy you did. You can thank me with a sub and a comment. Don't forget, help us out with that YouTube algo. We appreciate you as always. Thanks for watching Snap Take. See you tomorrow morning where we're going to talk about what I do with Legion and another sweet new deck. Peace.